understand what this might be is to try to understand this. Melanin was studied by the government yeah. all the way from, we can say that the, 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 the real powerhouse of that was studied from World War II on into now. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? A part, part of your death camps and the Jewish death camps, because you know, they had, a, they had a, a Jew that was a race of, um, bastard race of the Moors. Yes. That was rolling around Europe, and, they, and these were our cousins, these black people, that they threw out of every country in Europe, and then the final, the final solution to white them up mm-hmm. was uh, this, this strain of uh, 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 these, 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 these Jews was to uh, put them in the concentration camps, and that's where they studied, the, uh, they studied uh, uh, um, a form of melanin, which was before it was called melanin, it was called a cultum. And mm-hmm. later on, called melanin by by Dr. Aaron Lerner in the 1950s, um, 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 named it uh, mel- melanin, which is interesting here because they so-called have a comet coming in the fall of the year called Elanin. Mm. Elanin. Yes. Well, what are they trying to say? We, uh, they got a comet call called Elanin. They took the M off, and it's not by mistake that this comet is right in line with this 21st thing. So, like I said again now, try to tell the people, when, we, when, when you make these dates, we're talking about stuff that's going on on the inside of you. That way you don't be wrong, fail prophecies, and look right. like a damn fool when your day of judgment don't come. You see what I'm saying? And according yeah. to this, this, this Diane Stein's book, the stuff she's talking about is Christ's energy. And remember the Christ's energy is you ain't going to see no man in no robe with no sandals. <laughs> the Christ is coming, is coming through you. Right. So there's this, there's, but also lining up is they got a comet that's coming called Elanin. Mm. You see, um, sometime in the in in the fall of the year. Very interesting here. Now, so they studied this melanin thing, and um, they came to the conclusion on how melanin works. They tried to make the prototype of the melanin, and the prototype of melanin is nanotechnology. <laughs> Nanotechnology, that's the prototype. They even got some stuff where they're studying nanomelanin. But we do, uh, it's, nano, it's, it's nanotechnology is the prototype of how melanin functions. So they studied how melanin functioned. Mm-hmm. And it ended up, and in, in, in what their version of it, uh, their technological version of what they could create was nanotechnology. So anybody want to see how melanin works, you get the G.I. Joe movie that came out last summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that movie explained nanotechnology and what it can do. So apparently, what they are afraid of is when this nanotechnology unleashes in those people, those melanated people, the real nanotechnology, they're thinking it's going to be an invasion that will eat the world, about like a movie called Langdaliers. Anybody seen the movie Langdaliers? It was a movie came out in 1995. It was a Stephen King movie called Lang the Lives. And these little black dots ate up the earth. You see what I'm saying? I ate up one dimension. It's called the right. Lang the Lives. So, but you will see, when you see the nanotechnology in the movie G.I. Joe is what they are afraid of. Uh, and for some reason, they're afraid of that coming up out of us because they, they do know, based on... Based on all the ancient texts, this world is just going to disappear. Even in the Bible it said, you see what I'm saying, um, uh, this heaven and this hell would not be around. Yeah. Right. So if yeah. hell ain't going to be around, what the hell are you scared of? Hell is <laughs> only a state of condition and based on yeah. your knowledge of where you, where you are in this world. You can, it can be hell or it can be heaven. That's correct. You see? Yeah. You see? Right. So now, um, but they say this heaven and earth will not be around. So, obviously, this thing is going to disappear, and they are afraid. They are afraid that it's going to be this war of destruction with these, this melanin rising up and doing the nanotechnology. I say that that's just their fear because they're, 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 they're warfare people, and they always fear that. And, and, and why not? I mean, uh, you might as well put it on the table if you right. figure there's a chance of that happening. But... Um, for what we know, for what we know, um, 
it said it be gone like a twinkling of an eye. And so for what we know we're talking about how this thing is going to go down is basically we're just going to wake up and going to be in another world. Mm-hmm. You're just going to wake up out of this dream and this dream going to be gone. Because this is only an illusion anyway. And once the return of the third eye, you understand what I'm saying? At its full aspect, you don't have to have all the destruction and stuff like that. You see them all, all the destruction of. You're just going to come forth by day, which is the original book. The Egyptian yep. book of the dead say coming forth by day. Yes, yeah. You see? So we're just going to wake up, but that's not stopping them. But they still are showing what this melanin could do, which is in the East Indian text, some of the East Indian Kundalini texts where they say there are devices in the body that will come online and destroy everything if we were threatened mm. for distinction. You see, uh, uh, we were uh, threatened um, by distinction. That is also reported in the text. Um, it's a book called Kundalini for a New World by Gene Kiefer. Kiefer. And they talk about these, these, these devices that they, they found in these texts in India. There's devices in the body. So naturally that was something that probably could have happened if we were, we were slated for total dis, uh, 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 extinction. So they have to go about and kill us off on, on other means slowly. And, you see what I'm saying? And conspire... You see, to kill us and do not now announce the day of battle. So that's one aspect of it. But what we're talking about here is finding the third hour. We're just going to wake up and have a whole new, a whole new existence. Um, there's a book, Finding of the Third Eye, by Vera Stanley Alder, A L D E R, Vera V E R A uh, Stanley S T A N L E Y Alder, A L D E R. A book been out for years. Uh, book has been out for years. The finding of the third eye. She has another one called the fifth dimension. But what's interesting in this particular book, <coughs> why this book was always of uh, interest, was um, why it was always of interest. She mentions in this book that uh, one day the third eye, the, 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 the third eyes would open. Yeah. Uh, one day the third eyes are open. That's what we are pointing out. That's why this is very important with this lecture we're doing tonight. Right. She mentioned it. Um, Edgar Casey said, there, well, one day there will be a, and he, he, he did it, but he couldn't understand the metaphysics of it. So he said, one day there will be an incarnation of an entity called John Pineal. So he was looking for like a Christ figure. But John Pineal is the pineal gland. You see, and you got John, you got On, you got Elijah, you got Enoch, you got in a line of one before Christ would be uh, 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 would be Tahuti. So John is translated back into Egyptian as Tot On or Tahuti. So John Pineal is melanin and the light of the pineal gland, the light of the world. <laughs> so the entire of Christ is the light of the world. In ancient Egypt, the light of the world, or Horus, the light of the world, is none other than the pineal gland. Right, right. Now, Moses wrestled with the angel, not Moses, uh, uh, Jacob wrestled with the angel all night. And in the, in, in when, when morning broke, he saw the face of God right. called pineal. Called pineal, yes. Called, called pineal. The great face is another name, the, the great face is another name for Heru Light, another name for Heru or the Hero. Mm-hmm. Another name for the Hero, where you get the word Hero from, is hey, Heru, which is Horus, which is the pineal gland, Eye of Heru. Another name for Hero is called the Great Face, the Face of God. The Face mm-hmm. of God is on the inside of your brain, <coughs> which is the pineal gland. Now, going right along, we have... Osiris is a corn deity. Mm-hmm. Now they say no one knows, not even Jesus knows when the end, but the Father. Well, Horus don't know what the end until Osiris comes back. Osiris is a corn deity, and the corn deity, the uh, the, uh, the corn deity, they say that the pineal gland is exactly the size of a grain of corn. Mm. So we have the deity that Alistair Crawley um, drew 
and had it at Greenwich Village in the 1900s, 1919, I think, and a deity called Lamb. And Lamb has the head of a grain of corn. So they took this Lamb deity, put some bigger eyes on it, and they have been they have been dealing with that with the with with the uh, alien thing for years. So the alien mask that you see, all of the bug eyed things you see with the alien movies, um, that comes from Alistair Crowley's drawing of Lamb. But they say that Lamb is a part of an extraterrestrial government. But Lamb has a, a, a head is shaped like a grain of corn. Lamb is none other than the pineal gland. The extraterrestrial government is the pineal gland. Mm. You see, is the pineal gland. So now, going back, everybody, yeah. and so when I looked at Vera Stanley Alder's book, so where did she get this piece from? Was it a, a, a thing? Where did she get this piece from that said that uh, the pineal glands were open? Well, mm-hmm. she got it from, and some of the notes said, the Rosicrucian Co- Cosmos Conception. There's a book out called the Rosicrucian Cosmos Conception. <clears throat> they just put the book out maybe maybe three months ago. They put it back out. It's a book, um, it's a book that's from the uh, um, 1920s. So the Rosicrucian Cosmos Conception is coming from the Rosicrucians. The Rosicrucians also was for the benefactors for a lot of the stuff that the Moors left behind. They compiled all that and started the um, started the Rosicrucians um, also. Um, and, and one of our people that was also a part of the Rosicrucian was the, what we call the father of metaphysics, um, Pascal Beverly Randolph, the black man. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's Pas- Pascal Beverly Randolph. So, um, mm-hmm. but anyway. There's a book called the Rosicrucian Cosmos Conception. And that's where they talked about the, uh, the third eyes um, coming back in the future. Now, to line this up, we got one last piece where the brother was doing some work on electromagnetism in France. <clears throat> and he ran up on an article of uh, uh, one of the prophecies of Nostradamus that they didn't let out of France, where it said that in the 1990s, black people in America will come into their own. So this is what we need to find out. What was it? We got the knowledge came back, and obviously everybody that's listening, your third eye is online. Otherwise, you wouldn't be, you, trust me, you would not be listening tonight. So you don't have to worry about this. Right, but what we want right. to find out here is, is this. What is it that if, the, if, if we're supposed to have more conscious people, and the consciousness did come. It did come, it came late 80s and, and during the 90s, but... Compared to the amount of people when they say black people were going to come into your own, it's almost like a small percentage, like one point something. Mm. You see, uh, uh, the amount of people is conscious. But what happened to all those thousands of black people or indigenous people that third eye was supposed to come on that was prophesized? Right. You see, that was even even got a date in the 1990s. You see, in, in, in the 1990s. Um, even in the book, uh, the guy, um, Africans and Alien, you know, Africans in Asia, uh, uh, Eugene, um, can't think of the guy's name. Huh? Uh, it's called Africans in Asia by um, Eugene Adams. In his book, he said around, he gave a date of the future Buddha, he said around, in future Buddha, he go again, uh, uh, one of the forms of melanin is also called the Buddha Rupa. He said the future Buddha, which is Maitreya, or also called Kalki, will be hitting the earth around 91. So what happened while all of us mm. was uh, just a few people, right. but the majority of us are dead. You see what I'm saying? What happened? Yeah. Well, let me go into a story of a guy, that one of the guys that brought me into consciousness. Okay. And we believe now that this guy, he, he came to... You all right? How much time we got? Oh, we are doing wonderful. We have an hour and 32 minutes uh, to okay. go in the form. Yes. Okay, well, we're going to do this 32 minutes, and then we're going to, you know, we'll, we'll probably do a question and answer, but let's, let me just go, go with this. Yes. Um, the guy that brought me into consciousness, um, because the spirit world said they had to work around the clock to get me out of the shoe industry, to get me out of the art and stuff like that, and the, the guy that ultimately brought me into consciousness is a brother by the name of Maddox Moore. Mm. Now, when Maddox Moore was bringing me into consciousness, I saw Maddox Moore 20 years later, and he was in Chicago working on Barack Obama's campaign. Mm. Now, Maddox Moore 
is a guy that came to college, and for some reason, he would never graduate. So he got to Clark Atlanta. It was called Clark College at that time. He got to Clark College at that time somewhere in the early 1970s. By the time I met him in 86, he was still in college. He would work, he'd go to school, he'd get other majors, he'd either go get his master's at, the na- at, at, at Atlanta University, the neighboring school, but he would always stay on campus. And what Maddox, we found out, was he was an angel. He was an angel there to help students at a certain date and sometimes to help students gain their consciousness. I know this for a fact now. Yeah. All these years, the Maddox Moore was, was, was an angelic being that came there. And, 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 and also, anyway, Maddox Moore used to travel around the world with Jesse Jackson mm-hmm. back in the day. So now, he said Jesse told him something. Because I said, Maddox, you know, you, you ain't got no flow like the flow from the 70s, but you do keep a little bit of hair on your head. And this <laughs> was like 1988. Right, right. He said, well, I need to tell you this story. What Jesse Jackson said that the number one thing that the United States government did in the 1970s was one thing. They said, we have got to get rid of that afro. They said, we got to get rid of that afro. Um, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, what they, uh, and, and also, they first introduced the Jerry Curl. <laughs> yes. But that didn't work because the damn Jerry Curl start working for niggas. A nigga could get a Jerry Curl, a woman could be bald headed <laughs> and get the damn Jerry Curl and that old goddamn that uh <laughs> that old drip shit that yes. activator make her hair go down the damn street. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you remember how people get that activator, put that activator on and the motherfucker hair just grow like crazy. <laughs> so that shit didn't work. It just made right. it look ridiculous. <laughs> but it, it, it didn't work because that activator they, they didn't they, they didn't plan on that shit that shit lubricated the nigga head and people who ain't never had no help shit was going like crazy might have fucked up some damn some net some um some collars and some couches and some and some pillowcases but your shit grew so what happened was what happened was but at that particular time and we must ask this particular question mm. who invented this relaxer, this no lie relaxer. Yes. Did we invent it, or did the white man invent it, or the government? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We need to ask that because now we, because I'm gonna read something to you that was never put on any products in this country, but the spirit will bring it to us in another country. Mm. There's some stuff called suya. S-U-R-A, Henna, Brazil, S-U-R-A-Y-A, excuse me, S-U-R-A-Y-A, Henna, then it says Brazil. So it's from Brazil. We never saw this in this country. No. Because what it's going to say on the back of this box is going to reveal how they shut down the fucking pineal glands. And this is what it says. Um, This is what it says. This Henna does not damage... Melanin follicles. Remember now, Samson was what? The strength was in his hair. Was in the hair, yes. Was in the hair. DNA, our hair, spirals like DNA. Yes, it does. Also, they say that the universe spirals like our hair. Or like Dr. Yard used to call the nine ether. Yes. Okay? Now, yes. the strength was in his hair. He cut the hair off, and what happened? You cut he the hair. He went blind. Yes, yes. Which meant they stopped the third eye. Right, right. Ain't that a bitch? Yes. You see, now, we must ask this particular question, because if, if Jesse Jackson said that the number one shit, when he was dealing with them crackers, the number one shit, when I say that, I ain't talking about all you white folks. I'm talking about them damn government motherfuckers who get right. on our ass. Since day one. You see what I'm saying now? We're not letting them off the hook. 